Over the years, I've used several different types of point motor. The best of them, in my opinion, the tortoise. Although expensive, worth every penny. However, a few years ago, I decided to drag myself into the 21st century, along with it, my modelling skills. Initially, I experimented with the Pico servo system, but rapidly swapped to Dave Fenton's Megapoint system. Delving into the world of servos meant that I had to start building my own point motors. My contraptions that I built were mostly successful, however I was just a little disappointed with the operation. I was well on my way to solving all those problems and issues when I noticed a advert in the Model Railway Press, Dingo Servo Mounts. There's a link in the corner here and in the, in the description that will take you to his YouTube channel and website. Why do I think they're better? Well, it takes the up and down side to side motion and turns it into a linear side to side motion. So the, the operating wire doesn't rise and fall and that's what was causing me a few problems. Now, if I had a dozen or so points, I would without hesitation have just bought Dingo servo mounts. However, at six pound a pop, I have only over a hundred points. You do the math. Now, contrary to popular belief, I'm not averse to putting my hand in my pocket and spending money. Take note, my work colleagues that watch this, Messrs. Tully and Saunders. But when it comes to things that I can make myself, like point motors, chopping trees down, or telephones... <coughs> Hello? Enough of that. Let's build ourselves a servo point motor. We'll need a selection of evergreen styrene strip along with a sheet of 80 thou plastic card. We'll start off by building the actuator arm out of 60 thou styrene strip. A list of all the products I'm using in the description. I'm building them in batches of six and it's taking just on an hour to build them. The actuator arm complete, we'll set that aside, let the glue dry and harden off and we'll commence building the base, the sides and the top. I try to be really efficient on this as well, so I try to work out how to get it so with the least amount of cuts and the least amount of material used. The base is 36mm by 50mm and the top that I've just snapped off is 15 by 50. And then we've got the front and rear sides, which are 23 times 12 and 23 times 20. That's the base sides and top cut out. Next, we'll attach the front side to the top on a flat surface. And because I'm building six at a time in batches, I'm doing all of one step at a time. So when I'm ready to do the next step, the first one that I built is already, the glue's already hardened off and dried and ready to be used. We'll prep the servo next, and it doesn't really matter if you use the Tower Pro or the uh, Hobby King equivalent. They're both the same. Well, dimension-wise, the Hobby King one is slightly smoother running. After chopping the bottom fixing lug off, centering the arm and then drilling out the first hole with a 1.5mm drill. You need to cut off the extremities of this and then if you want you can just make it look pretty by chamfering the edges. Now the base has two score lines, a centre line for lining up the uh, servo and a line on the front which is 1.5 millimeters deep. That will become apparent in a minute. With the servo flush at the back, it's glued on with EMA plastic weld. Next we take the front and the top that we built earlier and just attach it. The front sitting on the score line that's 1.5 millimeters from the front. With those glued in, we then glue the back in that keeps everything square and a little bit more rigid. I did a sketch drawing 
it's linked as a PDF in the description, as always. With the main body now complete, it's time to get the moving parts on. Now, because we built the actuator arm out of 60 thou rod, we now have to get a few little pieces of 80 thou that will just rise just a little bit above it and make the actuator slide freely. I've not really explained that very well, but hopefully the pictures should explain it a lot clearer. And just to say that the glue needs to be very carefully added because otherwise it just gums everything up. That said, you need to be even more careful when you glue in the front cover piece on. And this front cover piece doesn't really need to be cut out of styrene uh, strip. It can be any offcuts because there's plenty of offcuts that are produced from, well, just general modelling really. I'll delve into the box of servo spares and pick out one of the little screws that come with all of them. That will be attached to the actuator arm to make everything move. Now I'm not sure if this step's actually necessary, but the edge of a screw acts like a file and I just thought a little bit of tube protecting it might stop everything biting together. It'll act as a sort of washer, shim sort of thing. Now that it's, and then it needs to be just pinched up, not tight, but just so there's like just a fraction of movement. Now to plug in and give it a bit of a test up, make sure it all works how I expected it to. Nice side to side linear motion. I'll just put a micro switch on, and if you're wondering, the longer actuator arms are for two micro switches. We'll delve into the world of electronics and electrics in a future video. I'll just drill a couple of holes in the bottom, attach it to my test bed, not including the servo and the micro switch. I think it's I worked it out and it's costing me between 15 and 20 pence per point motor, which isn't bad. Again, if you want to build this yourself, there's a, a link in the description to a PDF file with all the measurements and all the uh, materials that I've used. Thanks for watching. See you next time.